Hey everyone, uh, we're going to give folks a few more minutes to come in. So bear with us for the next two minutes, and uh, we'll we'll get started then. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Right-Click Tools 4.3 release webinar. My name is Chris Muster. I'm the CTO here at Recast Software. And today I'm joined by Brian Dam, one of the software engineers who works on the product every day. Uh, Brian was responsible for one of the major features in 4.3 in the Config Manager Fast Channel support that we'll talk about in a bit. And he also added a couple other features that, that we'll do a live demo of a little bit later. Marty Miller is also on the uh, webinar. He's our customer success manager, and he helps our enterprise customers with any technical problems that they might have with the product. Uh, Marty was a big advocate for our customers in this release. He worked with the development team closely to resolve a couple of uh, user experience issues on the recast management server with regard to uh, recast proxy and recast agent, and we'll talk a little bit about those later. Uh, Marty's going to be keeping an eye on the Q&A today. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, you can use that Q&A button inside of Zoom and Marty will try to get those answered in real time. If you're watching this on the YouTube live stream, you can use YouTube chat to ask your questions there as well and, and we'll try to get those answered too. Uh, this webinar is gonna be covering everything related to the 4.3 release specifically and, and actually more specifically the, the difference between 4.2 and 4.3. If you want a more broad overview of what the tools can bring, uh, you can actually schedule a demo when you download 4.3. Uh, there's a little scheduling UI that pops up. Or if you have specific questions about what's available in right-click tools, uh, you can use the contact us form or the chat on the website and, and we'll try to get those answered as well. Uh, today, we're gonna be talking through our release cycle. We'll talk about the different types of right-click tools releases we have and talk about what each of the, what you can expect in each of those. Uh, we'll talk through the new features in 4.3 as, well as well as give a live demo of some of the more impactful features uh, that we released. We'll take you through the upgrade process and, and how to download the right-click tools for enterprise and community users. And then we'll leave some time at the end for an extended Q&A session where Marty, Brian, and myself will try to answer any remaining questions live on the air. Uh, for the re release cycle, we haven't changed a whole lot since 4.0. Uh, we, we have two types of releases that we typically uh, talk about. We have our monthly releases. Uh, those are, you know, those will include bug fixes. They might include new features. Um, we don't really expect most folks will, will upgrade every month. Um, but we might recommend that you upgrade to a monthly release if we've fixed a bug in a version and, and you've reported that bug, we, we might suggest that you upgrade. Uh, if you do wanna stay on the newest code we've released, you can enable bug fix notifications 
uh, inside of Configure Recast RCT or your Recast Management Server Settings UI. Our more you know, common releases or the releases that we do a bigger marketing push on are our quarterly releases. And these basically roll up the last three monthly releases. Uh, these are the typically the re releases that users will see that in, in right-click tools notification that there's an update available. Uh, we, we do enable that notification by default. If you wanna make sure you're receiving those updates or receiving that notification, you can go into configure recast RCT or the recast management service settings UI and make sure that update notifications are enabled to, to make sure you see those. So new in 4.3, we, we have a number of features. Some of them we're gonna demo, some of them we won't. Um, we, in the May release, we introduced the right-click tools over the Config Manager Fast channel. Um, this to us was a big deal because we wanted in, to enable our, or a way for our enterprise users to react to some of the work from home changes that were coming. So we wanted to make the right-click tools work over the Cloud Management Gateway. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a minute. We improved recast management server performance by up to 10x in some scenarios. And this was something that uh, Marty worked closely with a couple of customers on and, and brought feedback to the development team. And so we focused uh, you know, the, the May release around that as well. We added auto approval for proxies and agents. And we actually split recast proxy into two components. Um, you can think of recast agent as, you know, recast device proxy, I think is what we called it in 4.2 and earlier. Um, with 4.3, we're, we're splitting those into two MSIs. We have the recast proxy MSI that you'll use for your, your service accounts or your untrusted domains. You have the recast agent MSI that you'll use for scenarios where you want to run the right-click tools uh, without admin rights as local system. And, and so in 4.3, we also allowed you to automatically approve those. And we'll talk through that in a bit. And these last four features, we're actually gonna do a live demo on. So we have the, the send notification tool to, to send messages to your user. The system information uh, tool received some updates. We, had, we added right-click tools in new areas, and then we added a new content dashboard. So you know, one of the biggest features was our, our right-click tools over the fast channel. Um, I should note that you know just by installing 4.3, you're not going to get fast channel support. There is a, a, a bit of setup work that you have to do and we do require uh, some extra components to be installed. We actually go in depth on that on our config manager webinar that we did in May. Uh, we have some, a blog and some documentation on, on our website as well. But as far as you know, why you might use this, it enables you to run the, the right click tools without admin rights. Uh, since we're leveraging the, the config manager fast channel, uh, the config manager client itself is actually running the right click tools actions. And since the, the client is running his local system, it doesn't matter who kicked off that those tools. It doesn't matter what permissions they have on the device itself. It only matters that you have permissions inside of uh, Recast Management Server. Uh, so that's nice. You don't, you don't need admin rights. Should help with some uh, lateral movement attacks. We also removed the need to open any firewall ports on the remote devices. So you don't need to enable remote SMB, remote WMI, and remote registry. And the reason for this is because the, the Config Manager client is actually maintaining a connection outbound from itself to your management point. Um, so no inbound connections actually need to occur on that device when you use the fast channel. Uh, so <clears throat> should help in, in scenarios where you're not allowed to open some of these things. And then finally, you know, this, this was the big driver for it. We, it finally lets you run right-click tools. Uh, over the cloud management gateway. So if you have devices that aren't on your corporate network uh, that maybe aren't even VPNed in, you, you can actually hit them uh, via the cloud management gateway. And I, I think this is the, the biggest reason to use the fast channel support inside of the right-click tools. If you have a desire to you know, eliminate the first two bullet points, uh, we actually have another solution for that in Recast Agent that is the, actually the fastest way to run right-click tools at scale. Uh, in your environment. So definitely check that out uh, if you're interested in those two features. So right-click tools over fast channel, we, you know, this is a high level architecture of, of what it looks like. Um, you know, everything starts with the right-click tools installed in your config manager console. It sends the action up to the recast management server. Uh, we, we utilize the routing layer on the recast management server as a way to customize how actions are run in your environment. And the, the fast channel is now one of those 
mechanisms of customization uh, that, that we make available. So if the, the server detects that you've set up a, a config manager fast channel route, it'll send that action over to the recast proxy that'll translate it into something that the, the config manager server uh, SMS provider can understand. Config manager infrastructure will reach out to your clients and tell it to run a PowerShell script. And the PowerShell script will call into a WMI provider that we supply with our recast agent. So, so there's a couple of prereqs here, right? So you, you need recast management server. Uh, you need a recast proxy installed in the environment. Uh, although we do, we do install recast proxy by default, or we, we try to install recast proxy by default with the recast management server. Uh, so most clients should have that. Um, but then you also need recast agent installed on your config manager clients to get that WMI provider. And there's a couple of reasons we architected it this way. Um, we, we did a lot of work in the 3.2 to 4.0 migration around making this level of customization a lot easier. And if we didn't utilize that, that routing layer inside of recast management server, if we didn't add that WMI provider on the recast agent, we would have had to touch quite a few or quite a large percentage of the actions that are actually run inside of right-click tools. And it would have increase the de development time significantly, um, probably on the order of the 3.2 to 4.0 uh, development cycle, which took you know a little bit over a year. And we, we didn't really want to do that. Um, utilizing this architecture, we actually went from talking about it in our developer channel on a Monday or a Tuesday to demoing a uh, proof of concept to the company on a Friday, right? So it was a you know, very fast dev cycle to, to get the proof of concept working uh, by utilizing this. Um, the other reason we chose this architecture is that we needed to work around some limitations in the fast channel. A lot of the right-click tools actions will work as you know as advertised over this fast channel, but there's a couple that return quite a bit of data. Uh, think like the the services tab of the system information tool. Uh, a lot of devices have a lot of services installed, and the number of services was actually larger than the fast channel supports us sending back over it, right? There's like an 80 kilobyte limit or, or there's some some message limit that, that it has. And so the WMI provider allows us to break that message up uh, across multiple messages. And, and so we need that WMI provider to cache the, the results of the action and, and split it up. Um, so moving on to performance improvements, uh, we have, focus quite heavily on, on recast management server performance uh, to the point where you improve scope evaluation by up to 10x. And we, we did this through a couple of changes. Uh, number one was the proxy settings cache so that the, the proxies weren't hitting the server for settings uh, as frequently. We also moved our audit log on the recast management server to a background thread so that we weren't, uh, we weren't slowing down the results of the actions by writing to the database. Uh, there's a number of other improvements we made here, and the end result was was pretty large. Right? We we worked directly with a customer uh, to try to improve this. They they had a very large Active Directory scope in their environment, and um, you know to the point where it was it was probably too slow to use the scope uh, before 4.3, and then after 4.3, they were they were just fine. It was, it was significantly faster. Um, we had to improve su streaming support in 4.3. In 4.1, we, we added kind of an initial version of streaming support where, um, and I think we called it large collection support at the time. And it basically allows us to, you know, stream the devices that we want, want to run actions against up to the recast management server. And in 4.1, you know, this let us run actions against, you know, 10,000, 50,000 uh, client uh, device collections. But uh, it was still, it still felt a little slow, right? Because we, the server was waiting for those actions or those, those uh, devices to stream up to it before it would actually start routing the, the action to proxies. Uh, with 4.3, we improved that so that actions start routing immediately. So as soon as the first device is streamed up, the recast management server will route it to a proxy and it'll start executing right away. And this should significantly reduce the time to first result for large collections. Uh, before it would it would scale linearly with the, the size of the device collection, uh, but now it's now it scales sublinearly. So it, it, you sh you should see similar performance uh, to getting that first result when running against ten devices versus you know ten thousand devices. You shouldn't see a huge uptick in time uh, to that first result. the The total execution time will will probably go up linearly, but uh, but at least the time to that first result will be quicker. 
and we have more to come here. We're, we're working with uh, some other customers on, on uh, performance feedback and uh, we're always open to digging into that. So keep an eye out for more, more improvements later. We also have a couple of UI updates. Uh, I mentioned the automatic approval for proxies and agents. In 4.2 and earlier, this was manual approval. So every proxy and agent you'd install in your environment, you had to go into the recast management server UI and approve it. In 4.3, we modeled this around the config manager's uh, client uh, approval rules. So by default, we moved it to automatic approval and trusted domains. This is the same setting that your config manager clients have in a default config manager site install. Uh, and we also added an option for automatic approval for all devices. So any any device, even if it's not in a domain that's trusted by the recast management server would get approved with that option. Um, so this should, should make it easier to deploy proxies and agents in your environment. And we added a couple of troubleshooting uh, UI options as well. So we added execution time on the audit log. We, we added a proxies button so you could see where your actions were being routed in the audit log. And then we added some troubleshooting options to scopes as well. All right, so that concludes the, the slide portion. Uh, let's let's jump into demo. Uh, so the first thing I want to show is the system information tool improvements. Um, here I've I've launched the system information tool on a number of devices. I'm just gonna hit refresh here. This is actually running over that config manager fast channel we talked about. So we we've done the work to to set up the recast management server. Uh, we have agents installed on these devices. So they have the WMI provider available. And as I run that, if I come over here to the monitoring node and uh, click on script status, sort by client operation ID, we'll be able to see the execution of some of those PowerShell scripts uh, in just a minute. All right, so we, we see here we have a, a script that ran at 916. If I show the status, uh, we can actually get some details about what it was running, right? So these are, this is the PowerShell input parameters that uh, for the scripts that we're running, uh, as well as the uh, the output. And it looks like, you know, a bunch of data that none of us could understand, but there's a that, that translation layer in recast proxies, what's turning that into the results that we recognize here. Uh, the other, the, the new bit inside of system information is actually this user sessions tab. And, this is, uh, this is pretty cool because it lets you see who's actually signed into these devices uh, in real time. So you know this might look familiar. It's, it's the same data that's coming in from the task manager users um, users tab, right? We can see the, the RDP session and the ID and that, that kind of thing. Uh, we, we give a little bit more detail here, right? We, we give you that same session name. I think we hide the ID from you, but we also give you, you know this, the status of the user. So we can see that Mark is, is uh, signed in but not connected to recast PC01, right? He he opened an RDP session at some point in the future, uh, in the past, and then he you know he just hit the X without logging out. So you can see he was, he was logged in for 22 minutes. He's been idle for 22 minutes and disconnected for 22 minutes. So um, you know maybe if we were trying to sign into PC01, we could select him and, and log him off. Um, similar, you know, we see Brian D. Uh, Brian Dam logged into PC01, and you know he's where he, we can see where he's logged in from, if his session is active. Uh, we can see how long he's been lo logged in for, how long he's been idle, and he's not disconnected because his, his status is active. And, and because he's not disconnected, we can see that, that session name that he's uh, participating in. So user sessions, new in, in 4.3 in the system information tool. Uh, now Brian is gonna take us through some of the other features that are available in 4.3. All right. Share my screen here. Um, so just really three things I want to I want to walk through uh, as briefly as I can. Um, and the first one is that we've just we've gone through a couple of different places and try to add the right click tools where they uh, weren't before. We kind of, it's, I was joking earlier. We kind of have one job, right? Is is to put right click tools in places. Um, but the reality is sometimes we we miss we miss them, especially as the, the config manager team keeps uh, adding new places in the console itself. So um, a good example of that here is if you go into the software library, they added Microsoft Edge and Office 365 client, client management nodes um, and started adding some stuff under them. And so when they kind of create a new thing like that, um, oh great, my console just crashed, beautiful. Um, 
when they create a new uh, uh, node object, or sorry, uh, a new node within the console, becomes a bit of a cat and mouth, mouse game for us, which is where um, we need to figure out what what that new thing is and and go ahead and and add that support into uh, the right click tools. And luckily this console takes about 45 seconds to load up for some reason on this VM. So I'm gonna try and be patient if I can. Um, and the, the really goal of kind of sh trying to show you this, which I'm failing at so beautifully, is that uh, it's actually really not that hard for us to, to generally add um, add the tools if they're missing. If they're missing in a, in a particular location in the console, we just need to know it about it. And, and we can fairly easily go and find where that location is and then go make sure that they add them. And so what I, what I want to impress upon you is, is if you see something like that, if you see a part within the console where you're like, wait a minute, why don't I have the right click tools? And especially if it's like something like devices and users, right? Which is, I think, 99% of all the times you'd want to run a, a right-click tool. Go ahead and go to our feature request board um, and, and let us know that, hey, this is missing there. And, and we, re we review those. It's, it's now part of our weekly uh, process, uh, or actually bi-weekly, I should say. Every other week, we sit down and we review the ideas board. Um, we review the work we're going to do um, you know, for, for that month, or sorry, for the next two weeks. And we will absolutely prioritize any, hey, anything that's that's, hey, you're missing the right-click tools here. We will absolutely try and do within those two weeks. So um, one of the other places I went through here beyond the software library was going through the monitoring node and trying to find any places uh, we were missing. And, and one of the particular places that was requested um, by a couple of customers, uh, well, yeah, a couple of customers on the feature request board was, hey, there's, there's under this client status, it'd be really, it'd be really great to have some, some better information here. Uh, just specifically uh, with your pre-production or production client deployment, right? You're rolling out the new client um, and you click on here and this creates a, a new temporary node here at devices. And before we didn't have, um, before the right-click tools weren't showing up here and now they do. So again, that's it, it, it's kind of our stick. It's, it's the thing we do. And, and the, the only thing I want to emphasize in all of this is, hey, if, if, if you right-click on, on something and you don't see it there, go ahead and make a feature request. Uh, Scott just, or actually Chris just sent that uh, a link to there in the chat. Uh, but make sure you go write it up there and we will do our very, very darndest to make sure that makes, in the, makes it into the next release. So the next thing I wanna show you is the notification tool. Um, and let me go ahead and find the machine. I'm, I'm logged into, into here into an endpoint and we're gonna fail at finding that device. Oh, that's because I'm in there. And we're going to go ahead and run a new console tool called send notification. Now, this is right in its current form. This is a pretty simple, pretty simple tool. There's not a ton of options here. You got your title. Uh, you got a message. And in certain cases, you can send an image along. Um, and so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and kick this off, and then we'll talk about uh, some of these other settings in a minute. So let's go ahead and send that notification. And what's what's actually going to happen here is that, and we should see this in a second. There you go. So it just added. You can see it added these um, scheduled tasks. So. Uh, there's actually three different ways that we're going to try and send a message, and I'll talk about that that in a little more detail. But the first one is our own uses our own uh, custom toast tool, and so what actually is going to happen here when you use the recast toast tool is it's going to go ahead and push that that actual tool. The it's a very small um, bit of code. We're going to push that to the device over SMB, and then we're going to set the scheduled task. Uh, and there's a bit of a delay. That's why I'm kind of on some level stalling here. But there you go. You can see. Um, we got our uh, recast toast notification using our own custom tool, it has the picture um, and shows you the title and message. If we go back and run this again, I'm gonna show you a few more of the options and try and explain why 
why we did it this way. That there's a lot of not notification tools out there in the community. One of the things we really wanted to do was make sure the user gets the message, right? Because there, there's multiple ways of doing this, toast notifications, uh, using our own custom tool. The second option here is using the, the config manager client. Um, the, the SAM client has its own uh, little toast notification executable that's already on there. And so that's an option to use that as well. Um, and then lastly, we actually have one that's ba based on the root, one of the basic APIs of Windows, the Windows operating system. Uh, and it's really there for the, the rogue desktop protocol. Um, and so the reason for having all three of these is that um, we will try them in order, right? So we will try, for, in this case, we will try to use the recast toast notification tool first. But let's say we can't push our tool down there because you don't have SMB loaded um, or you don't have admin shares uh, enabled. Well, that's going to fail. That's going to fail. Um, and then it'll go to the next tool, which is the CM toast notification tool, right? And that's going to go say, hey, We'll look at the XC for config manager, but what if the config manager tool, you know, maybe this isn't a config manager client. We don't actually require that to run this tool. Uh, and in that case, it'll actually finally default to the Windows pop-up message, right? So in that case, we need nothing installed. We don't need our tool. We don't need the config manager client. Um, that will simply show up a dialog. And so I just want to show you what um, these other two look like. You can see here, we can disable those. If, if you know that you don't have SMB enabled, um, you can just go ahead and, and deselect that option entirely. If you just want to do one of these, you can just do one of these. And so I just want to, I'm going to use that feature here to go ahead and show you what those other ones um, look like. Uh, and the first thing you can see here is when I deselected the recast toast notification tool, I can no longer browse for an image. Uh, and the reason for that is that only our tool, um, only our custom tool allows you to to select an image. Uh, these other two will, will never show you an image. And that's that's just a, a based on those, those own tools limitations. So again, similarly what we're gonna do here, what should happen is we can see, we, we, uh, we saw the CM toast notification. And again, there's a bit of a delay here. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna wait it out. It's nine, uh, I think there's about a 30 second delay. And we have that in there just so that there's a bit of time for the tool to go ahead and create um, that schedule task, uh, which itself can take a little bit um, before we actually run run the uh, run the schedule. Right? If we ran the schedule and it, by the time we actually created the the schedule task, that time had already passed, and well, that's a problem. So there you go. We can see. That. And then I want to redo this and just show you the last one. The the upside to this last one is that it is immediate. It doesn't work. Um, it works on a different principles using those uh, the, the base APIs for Windows to actually send a message. Um, and so it happens very, very quick. There's no other real dependency. As long as you have admin access to that box, it is gonna work. Uh, I'm just not even gonna get pretty with it this, this time. Go ahead. And you can see by the time I clicked over there, we already we already have that, uh, that dialogue up. Uh, so, what I want to say about this is specifically talk about the, the recast host notification. That's really just our first kind of iteration. We, um, we'd love to hear feedback. Go ahead and go to the feature request board and tell us, hey, that's, that's great, but can you do this? Uh, we already had some, some good ideas from uh, yesterday's webinar. Hey, can we add URLs? Can we add larger images? And um, the answer to all that is maybe, sure. I mean, some of that's absolutely possible. So we'd love to get feedback on, hey, here's what, I, here's how I'd like to use a notification tool. Um, this is great, but I'd like to see it do this other thing. The other thing I want to point out here is um, when you run this tool, it actually it will actually give the feedback to tell you, hey, you tried to use all three of these. We did it in this case, um, but it will actually show you um, which which method it used on those uh, devices. I see a question there because I had the chat open uh, about those scheduled tasks. Yes, they do automatically clean up. They actually have an expiration date on the trigger. Um, so we give it uh, uh, 24 hours. Uh, and so after, after a day, these should go ahead and, and just clean themselves up. So that's the notification tool. Uh, what I want to show you next here is a new dashboard. Um, our our sales team loves dashboards, managers love dashboards, our customers love dashboards. Um, and so anytime somebody comes up with the idea to create one, we're, we sort of 
you can't say no. Um, and so Mark, this is uh, uh, actually the notification tool was primarily Mark Godfrey's work. This is also um, his work as well. He created this dashboard. Um, and it's all about trying to get a better idea of, of how your content distribution is going. Uh, part of this, uh, the impetus for us to do this was we, we have some content tools um, that, are, that we like and our customers like them, but they're kind of, to use them is, is, was really, really way down into the console. Um, and there was no, there's no great, there was no really visual um, bit in the console to, re to really visualize, hey, how is my content? Uh, distribution going. And so uh, we're like, well, let's go ahead and create it. And again, I want to iterate, this is like a, a first, this is, sorry, reiterate, this is a first iteration of this idea, uh, of this concept. Um, we actually had lots of discussions about what this should look like. And, and I think we, we almost made Mark rage quit um, with our suggestions and feedback. Uh, and so we would love to get that from customers. So the idea here is let's just get something out to, to customers. Let's get them using it. And then we'll hear back. Uh, we want to hear back. Uh, well, it's it do this. Um, and so right now, what it's going to do is list your distribution points. It's going to give you uh, in a bar form. Hey, here's here's how successful or unsuccessful they are. And the key thing is 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 that then you can click on that, right? You can click on those charts. And you can say, okay, here's all the here's all the the um, content that's in this case failed. And I can go in and right click on that and I can get more information about that status or that content. Um, I can say, hey, go ahead and just redistribute that. Um, I can remove that content from the DEP if I want to you know, completely wipe it clean and start again. I can validate it uh, on the DEP to get that information. Um, and then the other thing we have in the right click, uh, sorry, in the right uh, top right is redistribute failed content transfers. So this is kind of the big, the big hammer, right? Uh, and, and I just, suspect what a lot of customers will do is they're going to come in here and say, oh, okay, I have some failed transfers. I'll go ahead and redistribute them. Go do that. And then I'll come back, you know, in three, four hours and I'll refresh this information and I'll say, okay, well, what's, you know, what's failed and why has it failed? And then try and dig into, uh, dig into those issues deeper. So, so again, first iteration of a content um, dashboard, if you have ideas, we'd love to hear them. Uh, go ahead and go to feature our feature requests, which Chris threw up a link to in the chat there and, and let us know what we can do better. And with that, I am done. I'm going to hand it over to Scott. Thanks a lot, Brian. That was great. Really interesting stuff. Um, before we get to the Q&A, I will just show you guys how to go to our website and and get 4.3, get all these new great tools Brian and Chris have been talking about. If you're an enterprise user, you can go straight to Portal and you'll be able to see the release notes um, and download over here on the side. If you're a community user, there'll be a little form on the website, which I can show you. Just put in your name, email, uh, company, fill out the fields, and you'll get an email sent to you with the download. Also on the website, um, no matter which page you're on, on top there will be this button up here to scroll down and it'll take you to the form to download the, the tools. You can also log into your portal if you're an enterprise user or contact sales if you're interested in pricing or if you want a demo or if you have any other questions. You can see our features. You can see customer stories, overviews, FAQs. Uh, pretty much anything on the website. And like I said, you can always download the tools or log into portal on the portal at the top, no matter which page you are in. And with that, then I guess I'll hand it over to Marty who can answer all of your guys' questions. Hey everybody, it is uh, great to be able to talk to you today. Uh, my name is Marty. I am the customer success manager here at Recast Software. Um, I've probably talked with or text or uh, emailed with or possibly even chatted with some of you. Um, so it's great to see you all here. Um, so this is the time to answer any questions that you may have about the right click tools. And we can go ahead and, um, and answer those. So uh, the Q&A button should be right at the bottom of your screen. If you tap on that and then you can answer or uh, put, go ahead and put in any question that you might have there. All 
where can we find the server proxy server slash proxy install download? Um, so all of that is part of our enterprise suite. So it's part of the RecClick Tools enterprise. So it will be available on your uh, on the portal page for you for your organization. So portal.recastsoftware.com is where that will be located. All right, we have a question. What is fast channel? <laughs> so uh, that's a, a little bit bigger question. Um, what the fast channel is, just to get a little bit of an idea, uh, fast channel is a, it started out kind of as a notification um, engine in uh, Config Manager 2012 R2, and they have continued to add um, features to it. Uh, one of the things that's actually super, what, what makes it so that we can run things over Fast Channel and over our Cloud Managed Gateway as well, or over the Cloud Managed Gateway, is the ability to run sprints. So Fast Channel is basically a way that um, clients and the Config Manager server talk to each other. Um, and we are then able to utilize that because it can run scripts, which is a script, how we essentially make our tools work over that Fast Channel. All right. When sending messages, does the machine have to be online, or can the receive can the machines receive the message once it comes back online? Good question. This is I'm guessing about the the client notification tool. Um, the client would need to uh, the the computer does need to be online. And actually, if you noticed, what it actually was doing was it was creating a um, it was creating a task for all the people who are logged into the device. It's actually a user setting that shows that actual pop-up. Um, so actually it would also need to have a user uh, logged in as well in order to receive those, uh, those notifications. Are they installable on a VM? Um, I think this is probably from the earlier question about the management server and uh, proxies and all of that stuff. Yes, everything is, is can be installed virtually uh, on a virtual machine. I guess you're really installing it, but it's on a virtual machine. Um, so definitely able to be installed on a virtual machine. Um, that's how we have all of our test environments set up. Um, and that's, yeah, we, yeah. we only we only own one physical device, <laughs> like right. one physical device. Everything you saw demo today was all on one physical device. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the uh, distribution point contact the content dashboard in the community edition. Um, I I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Does uh, Brian or Chris? Nope. Do you know? Okay. No, all, the the dashboards. All the dashboards are part uh, are exclusively part of the enterprise. Uh, you'll see, uh, I mean, you'll see them there um, and they should have sort of a, um, a demo functionality. Um, uh, and if you, when you first install, uh, if you have a 30 day trial license, which comes with your initial download of the right click tools. And I, I think uh, the 4.0 or, you know, 4.0 or 4.1 or 4.2, I think we, we, we gave everyone again, another 30 day trial uh, They'll be enabled. You can play around with them. Once that once that license expires, and it just reverts back to demo mode. Yep. I think the thing that I missed there, and what's important to remember, is uh, the dashboards are all going to be part of the enterprise content, um, which you can get a trial to. And if you really like it, let us know, and we can figure out what it would cost to to make that work in your environment as well. Uh, which version of SMB is used? We have SMB v1 disabled. I am glad that you have SMB v1 disabled. Um, you will still be able to uh, use our tools. So do not worry there. Chris is, looks like he has something to say. Yeah, it was just good to add, like typically our, our tools don't specify versions of protocols, right? So okay. TLS, SMB, you know, we, we use whatever the operating system gives us. Um, so if you do have SMB1, consider moving off of it, but you know, if, it, if it's what's available, we would use it, but you know, we, we have no requirements about versions of protocols under underlying um, the right-click tools. Perfect. All right. Are they mandatory to use right-click tools? Um, I think we're, uh, this is another follow-up from the uh, recast management server and the proxies. 
Uh, those are not necessarily required to use right-click tools. We do have what's called a standalone version of the right-click tools. And the standalone version um, will have all of the, the, the if, you, if you purchase the enterprise version, will have the enterprise functionality enabled. Uh, there will just be some things that might be a little, uh, that you might not have complete access to. For example, um, scheduling actions, uh, builder, scheduling kiosk actions, uh, basically scheduling some actions to happen in the future um, require the, the management server. And if you want to do things like the fast channel that we were showing earlier uh, and Cloud Manage Gateway communication, that all does require uh, to have the management server set up and in place and, and working. How is Recast Agent installed on clients? Configuration Manager. It absolutely can be installed via the Configuration Manager. Uh, that was one of the things that we wanted to make sure uh, was a possibility when we created it because we anticipated that people would want to be doing that. On our website, and it's probably on the blog as well, there's actually documentation about what you need to make that work. There are some additional command lines that you would need to set in your application or in your package uh, to have it installed correctly. Um, but those those things are listed. Um, and I think Chris just posted the, the docs connection to that uh, fast channel uh, page and that does have information about what some of those command lines are that you can add. Um, and then there's also a blog that is very good walking through each of the steps uh, to get the fast channel set up. And he also says silent install. So that would be essentially installing through configuration manager. So yeah, uh, what I'll say is we, we fully expect every, anyone who uses the agent is going to install it manually once on one client and then deploy it with config manager or the tool of their choice, I guess. Um, and we spent a, I wrote the installers. So, and I'll say that I tried to do my best to make like the client install, update, not install as cleanly as, as possible uh, because we know and expect people to sort of deploy it in mass. Very good. Is there a new different config manager client for non-domain joined computers for accessing or running actions? Does remote control work with this also? Um, so essentially we, um, the actual config manager agent, which is what we're talking about as the, the thing that would be uh, good for the non-domain -joined, non joined uh, computers did exist previously. We, we just called it something different. It was the uh, device proxy is what we had called it previously. Um, so that hasn't really changed. We changed the name to call it the config manager or the uh, right recast agent. Um, so that hasn't necessarily changed. Does remote control work with this also? Um, I guess I'm actually, I've never tried it. Does Chris or Brian, do you know what that? Well, so if you, I'm assuming they're referring to Config Manager's remote control. Oh, sure, yeah. In, in which case, um, that's a that's a separate from the right-click tool question. Right. And I will tell you that, yes, you can actually make the remote control viewer work on non-domain joint devices. I did that um, my last organization um, um, because of our, uh, we were, a big part of what we did was distribution um, for whatever reason, and they weren't domain joined, like 60% of our devices were not domain joined. Um, and we managed them just fine with config manager. Some weird things you have to do there, but yes, you can get, I won't go into all the details, but yes, you can get remote access to work on a uh, non-domain joined device with config manager, but that really has nothing to do with our tool per se. Once you get the agent, uh, in terms of our tools, once you get the agent, it's all about the agent, right? Um, and whether it's an untrusted domain because that's actually what a workgroup device really kind of is or a non-domain joint but it's like it's in a domain we just don't trust it right the domain is workgroup um i mean that's super that's oversimplifying the case but um get the agent on there and, and all the tools should work in fact they'll work faster than every other method as well yeah and, and you know for for the untrusted domain scenario specifically for for right click tools to work you don't actually need recast agent installed huh? for untrusted domains right you you can use recast proxy instead if you want to run them as a service account in that in that untrusted domain very good point thank you 
Um, have any of these tools been tested over direct access without a CMG? Do you know if this is possible? Um, I know that this is theoretically possible because of the way that the recast agent should be reaching out to the, um, the management server. It should actually be possible to, to do this over direct access. Um, I don't know of any customers who are currently using um, using this successfully. So if you are and you have tested it and are having trouble, let us know. If you're having uh, no problems at all, also please let us know. Yeah, and the, yeah. Other, the other thing there too, like if you've configured direct access for manage out and you have you know, all your DNS work set up properly, I think you can get the right click tools standalone to work over direct access. Um, Mark would probably kill me for that, but I, I'm pretty sure you can do that. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it all boils down to DNS and being able to reach that box. I missed the beginning. Surprise meeting. That'll happen. Uh, is agent just for non-domain computers or is it useful for everything? Um, agent can be useful in, in, a, in a couple of different scenarios. That's a really good question because I, I think we've talked about it in, um, we've talked about it in the non-domain joined and then also using the cloud managed gateway. Um, an additional reason why you may want to use agent, Chris mentioned it, I think, it, and it was probably toward the beginning, um, but it is also uh, something that you can have the right-click tools actions run without uh, a user being local admin on the box. So the person who's running the tools would not need to be local admin on the computer that they're running the actions against, uh, which is super helpful because um, as more and more organizations are going to uh, maybe a situation where they don't have any accounts that are actually local admins, they just have like a, a maybe a, a, a lapse account that you know the password changes all the time. Um, that way you can actually run our actions against it. You don't have to do anything additional um, and they should uh, work that way. So there are a couple of different uh, reasons that you may want to use agent um, as well, depending on, on how your environment is set up. Uh, just as an aside, we actually have a, an organization that we're working with that's, that's planning on installing agent on all of their computers because of the, the need for no one to be local admin. So it is something that can be done. And uh, we also are very willing to help you out with anything that you need to get that up and running. Yeah, in the one, I'll tag on to that a little bit. In addition to the, you know, having local admin, the other one we, we, part of the reason we went down this road is because we kept hearing from customers who were saying, well, you know, security won't let me have remote admin shares enabled. Uh, they won't allow me to enable remote, uh, remote WMI and remote registry and you know there's we can have an argument that well you can do that securely but it's uh, on some level you it's not an argument you can you can maybe win with your security department sorry to also argue that it's it, it is more secure if you just turn those things off I mean, is it worth it I don't know but it's hard to say it's 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 not more secure with those things turned off and and so for all those reasons uh, in all those situations where you have a security issue or an authentication issue, um, the agent is sort of is, is going to help you get around those things. Uh, we, we, you know, we had a lot of, you can blame me for the whole calling it a, a, a device proxy and not an agent because I hated, 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 hated the idea that there's a recast agent uh, because all, all of us on the team have come come from being systems administrators for, you know, in, for many of us over a decade. Uh, and we just hate, hate, hate having to say, you know, having yet another agent. Um, but to not have an agent ultimately comes limiting, right? In those conversations of work group devices, hey, I, I just, I can't open a port. That's the other one I wanted to mention. But we had some people that were like, oh, I'm not going to open this rando, you know, this rando uh, firewall port or whatever. Um, those kinds of things. Yeah, and the other the other thing there too is like we we harp on the fact that it's an agent and you know that we we don't want to install yet another agent on the box, but it really all it does is you know it sits there and waits for an action from the recast management server. It's very light, doesn't doesn't do anything uh, when you're not running actions against it. So um, you know, don't don't worry too much about it eating CPU or anything like that. All right. Yeah, we we have no inventory component, right? That's there's nothing the agent should really do on a schedule. 
Very good. Um, can non-admin SCCM, are they able to use right click tools? Um, I'm not exactly sure where we're going with the question, but um, what I would say is one of the things, depending on how your, your right click tools are configured, um, with the um, like with the management server, there are definitely ways that you can limit actions, uh, right-click tools actions to specific users. Um, additionally, if even if you're not using uh, the management server, right-click tools in, in that instance isn't going to let you do more than you have uh, permission to do in your environment. So if you're using right-click tools in your environment and you don't have the right to do something in Config Manager or in Active Directory, um, and you try and do those things, um, config, uh, right click tools is still gonna come back and tell you, hey, you do not have permission to do those types of things. So there are definitely some permissions, things that you want to consider um, depending on how you have the right click tools configured. As usual, I'm gonna take on to that a couple. Yeah, yeah. So like you don't within, so what, what Marty just kind of described, within config manager, you don't need to be a full admin to run our tools, right? Um, and then, if you are, even if you were, you can actually further restrict in our tools with uh, uh, recast management, what different people can do. If you're asking, can somebody use the right-click tools who is not a, a SCCM user themselves, right? They don't have the console. The current answer is no, um, not really. Um, we're, at, we're working on a few things right now uh, that we can't really promise an ETA on, but we are uh, having users being able to use the right-click tools without ha having to go through the actual configuration manager console is a thing that's on our radar. Um, and it's, it, it's one of those, you know, some of the stuff we're talking about even now in this is trying to lay the foundation for some of those kinds of things. Um, so that that we wanna get there, I guess is, is the best thing I'll say. Um, I can't tell you that we're getting there in the next release or this year or next year, but. Um, yeah, it, and I think there's a, there's got to be a feature request that's that's um, on our feature request board. Go ahead and, and vote it up. Or, yeah, it ha there has to be one there. I'll try and go find a link to it and, and post it in the chat here. Very good. Uh, next question, um, is it possible to add users into a user collection? I actually just went real quick to my test box. If you click on a collection, go to right-click tools, you may select add users to collection. So it's absolutely something that you can do. You can also remove users from that collection if you want to as well. All right, um, follow-up question. Is there harm or interference with any right click tools actions already being used if I just put the agent on everything? Um, generally, there isn't going to be any harm or interference with right click tools actions. Um, you do will want to make sure um, once you have the agent set up, you are also going to need to make sure that your routes reflect that you want things to happen. Um, over the agent route. There's actually a route that you can set in the recast management server to set that. Um, once that is set, then your actions will route to the agent um, once that is set that way. Yeah, and I actually believe that's on a default recast management server install. I think we always try to route agent first and then fall back to the right-click tools. So it out of the box, if you start installing agents, they should just start being used automatically. Yep, you just may want to check. Sometimes I know people have removed routes that they don't think they'll need, or yeah, or have absolutely. or have reordered them if they if they didn't want. Yeah, you know, whatever. I, I would just make sure that those are set uh, correctly. So, yep. All right, we have a couple more minutes. If there are any uh, other questions that anybody has. Wait just another minute or so to see if there are any additional questions.
any plans for auto? Here we go. We got a question. Uh, any plans for auto updating the tool? Um, that would definitely be something that could go or may already be on our feature request page. Oh, it is. I wrote it and I'm looking there. it up right now. <laughs> there you so go. The short answer is yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what you can do to make sure that that either happens or doesn't happen, I don't know, make sure it happens. Go ahead and go on to the, um, to the feature request board and vote it up so that it becomes more apparent that people are interested in that feature. And it's not just Brian. Yeah. Yep, we 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 want it to work just like automatic client upgrade for both proxies and and proxies desktop tools. Um, uh, I, I guess this this one's actually a bit older, so I'm saying proxy, but I, I should include agent, right? So we want our agents. We want the we want definitely the agents and any proxies uh, to update. The idea is you, uh, for an enterprise user, you would update rec currently in the in the current situation. Let's say you update recast management server. So you're going to update recast management server. Uh, any proxy you have now needs to be updated. Any agent also needs to be updated. Um, reasonably, you know, the, the latest version will work with n minus um, one, generally speaking. But you can't get too far far away from them. Uh, you can't you can't get too far away from each other in terms of those versions. And so, yeah, absolutely, we, we want we want you to be able to simply update the recast management server. And then maybe with a little bit of configuration, everything else falls in place. We have just a couple more minutes if there's another question out there. All right, I think we're probably down to the end of questions. Why don't I go ahead and hand it off to Scott? Yeah, I just wanna thank everyone for coming. Um, it means a lot to us to see such an engaged community. Uh, big thanks, of course, to Chris and Brian and Marty as well for putting this on for us. Um, just a lot of great information going out because of them. So thank you guys. Um, with that, we look forward to seeing you guys um, we will have this we uh, webinar recorded and it will be posted to our blog so you can always check it out in the future. You can follow us on Twitter to keep updated with other updates and whatever is happening in the recast software world. Um, and thank you guys for coming again and I hope you all have a great day.